In this video, we're going to discuss Taylor and Maclaurin series. So we'll start by assuming we have a function f, we'll call it f of x, and let's assume that it can be represented by a power series. So f of x is given by this power series here, starting at 0, going to infinity, a sub n, and then x minus c to the n. So assume that your function can be written uh, as a power series centered at c. And here x is in some open interval containing c, so everything is good. f of x is equal to a power series. If this is the case, then it follows that a sub n is given by the following formula. So it's the nth derivative. The parentheses around the n indicates that it's a derivative evaluated at c over n factorial. And we can rewrite our function now. So rewriting our function, we have f of x equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. So let's see, let's replace a sub n with this. So we have the nth derivative at c over n factorial, and then this here is x minus c to the n. So this might remind you of the Maclaurin and Taylor polynomials. This is just like the infinite version, basically. So if you write this out the long way, it's going to look like this. You'll have f of c plus f prime of c x minus c, just like the Maclaurin polynomial, except it's infinite. So 2 factorial. I'm actually not even looking at the, at the infinite sum when I write this. Uh, I actually just have it memorized because I have the pattern memorized. So it's the 0th derivative over 0 factorial, and then the first derivative over 1 factorial, etc. It goes on forever. So this is called the Taylor series. So this is the this is the Taylor series for f at x equals c. And just like before, if c is equal to 0, well, when we talked about Taylor polynomials, if c was 0, we had the Maclaurin polynomial. Well, now that we're talking about series, if c equals 0, we get the Maclaurin series. All right, let's go ahead and do a very simple example of finding an actual Taylor series. Uh, it's always harder to find Taylor series than Maclaurin. When c is equal to 0, it's, it's pretty easy. When it's not equal to 0, usually it's a little bit harder. So let's do one that's not too hard, but c is not equal to 0. So let's say we have uh, f of x equals uh, e to the x. And let's say c is equal to 1. And let's find the Taylor series. So find Taylor series. OK, so solution. So basically, it's like finding the Taylor polynomial, except uh, you have to go on for forever. So we'll start by finding the derivative. So we have f of x. That's equal to e to the x. And the nice thing is the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. No matter how many times you take the derivative, you're going to get e to the x. So the nth derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. You'll notice in the formula, we have to plug in a number. So our number here is 1. So the nth derivative of e to the x evaluated at 1 is e to the 1. So it's just e. Let's go ahead and use the formula now. So we have the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of the nth derivative at 1 over n factorial. And then we have x minus 1 to the n, right? Just matching the formula that you see up here, right? C is 1, just plugging in 1 into the formula. So this is equal to the infinite sum, as
as n runs from 0 to infinity, while the nth derivative of e to the x at 1 is just e, so we get e over n factorial x minus 1 to the n, and that's it. That would be the Taylor series uh, for e to the x centered at c equal to 1. So I picked a really easy example. Many of the times uh, it's not so easy. In particular, uh, this part here is not so easy. It's not clear what the pattern is. So what you do in the harder problems is that you actually write it down the long way and then you do some work and you try to find a pattern so that you can write it like this. So this example uh, was deceptively simple. In the examples that follow, in the videos that follow, uh, you'll see harder examples of finding both Taylor and Maclaurin series. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.